Hello everybody, my name is Eric D. Johnson. I'm so much back. I live right here in the city of Memphis in the county of Sheriff's and State Tennessee. Today's date is early Monday morning, March the 12th, 2018 time, 5-11 a.m. First day, thank you to all my fans my support for your continued encouragement and support. I'm continuing to keep myself employed right here in this Memphis. Try to stay area. I'm continuing to further my education. My whole college don't mind pursuing my social media. Study business administration with concentration market. I uh, took a break from going to school, but in the very near future, I will be uh, going back to school to further my education. What I'm do right now with my uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody, my name is Eric D. Johnson, also on the right channel, You're right here in the city of Memphis, in the county sheriff, in the state of Tennessee, today and day, it's early Monday morning, March the 12th, 2018, time 5-12 a.m. First day, thank you to all my fans, my support, for your continued encouragement and support. First one, I always give thanks to God for all the blessings and the guidance that he provides you with. Uh, all those who are listening and watching, my uh, Instagram video, I also uh, make my uh, YouTube video and uh, my uh, Periscope video, Facebook Live video. So uh, uh, not only watch my uh, Instagram video, but I also watch those videos uh, as well. I'm doing right now, do my uh, Facebook live video.
Hello everybody, my name is Eric D. Johnson, also known by right here in the city of Minnesota, County of the state of Tennessee. Today's date is early Monday morning, March 12, 2018, time 5.16 a.m. First, say thank you to all my fans, my support, people, team, encouragement, and support. Anti gang, you know, uh, it's a serious uh, 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 issue, you know, a very serious issue. And, uh, and it's going to be taken seriously, like I say, uh, going to continue to speak out, going to continue to complain, and it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to lead to uh, anti gang demonstration protests. As a matter of fact, uh, <coughs> Now, there are a few, these are, I have a few websites that have a uh, free logo, free logos, and uh, you can go to these websites and make uh, anti-gang logos. I say these are only just a few. There are many websites. These just a few. Now, uh, take a little time uh, to uh, to address uh, the scriptures. Now, we make the team. We make the team to uh, expose Saul from Tarsus. Expose Saul from Tarsus. The self-proclaimed. Apostle Paul. Now, we know that Saul was supposedly converted in Acts chapter 9, uh, verses 1 through 30. 1 through 30. And uh, like I say, he was supposed to be converted by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's supposed to be converted. Now, when we expose Saul from Charles the Shepherd became Apostle Paul, uh, we know he lied. We, we know there are many, even before Acts chapter 22 and 26, there were many things that Saul from Charles the Shepherd became Apostle Paul that he said and did that was uh, contrary to, to his supposed conversion 
And uh, by the time we got to Acts chapter 22, uh, and you know, he tells about his conversion. It should be, it should be obviously, you know, it should be clear that there's something unusual about this person. Something unusual about this person. Now, like I say, he lied in Acts chapter 22, verse number 9, when he tells about that these men who journeyed with him, he said they saw the light, but they didn't hear the voice of Jesus Christ. We know that's a lie, because in Acts chapter 9, verse number 7, it tells that the men that journeyed with him, they saw the light. And they heard a voice, but they didn't see no man. In Acts chapter 22, verse number 9, he lied and said that those men, they saw the light, but they didn't hear the voice of Jesus Christ. Now, that's not the only lie he tells in Acts chapter 22. But that's one of the main, you know, that's, that's a lie that we know we go, you know, we go straight to it. But that's not the only lie. That he tells in Acts chapter 22. He lied about Ananias. You know, he he, uh, he lied about being in a trance. I had to remind you about Saul for Tarsus lied about being in a trance. You read Acts chapter 9, you don't see nowhere in Acts chapter 9 about Saul for Tarsus being in no trance. So, these are the lies that he tells. In Acts chapter 9, I mean, excuse me, in Acts chapter 22, when he tells about being, you know, tells about his com supposed conversion. In Acts chapter 26, verses 13 14, he recounts uh, his conversion. He lied again. He says that I heard a voice. Well, nobody's going to deny that. Jesus Christ spoke to uh, Saul. Saul, Saul, why persecute my, why why persecutors thou me? He answered, Lord, Lord, who art thou? He heard the voice, but he said that I. He made it as if he was the only one who heard the voice of Jesus Christ. He lied. Now, uh, we know that these man-made religious organizations, they listening to Saul. We know this. This is who they listen to. The Catholic Church, the Church of Christ, uh, the Church of England, the Orthodox churches, uh, all this denomination, non-denomination, uh, the Protestants, such as the Baptist Church and, and, and the Breakaway Church from the Baptist Church, uh, the Church of God in Christ, uh, the Episcopalian Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Lutheran Church, the Calvinist Church, uh, and we may, we'll be here all day, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Seventh Day of Venice, the Mormons, Scientology, all, all that man-made religious order and this is what they're going by they taking scriptures out of the Bible now this is this this is what they listen to they listen to Saul from Tarsus Romans chapter 16 verse 16 salute one another with the Holy Kiss the church with the suffix es churches of Christ salute you Another scripture, Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse four. So that we are see a glory in you in the church with the suffix he is a God for your patience and faith and all your persecution and tribulation that ye endure.
there are three places in the Bible it talks about this Christian stuff now Acts chapter 11 verse 26 and when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch now the main point who said call the disciples Christians in Antioch who said why why small dissension and dis disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. That's the end of it. That's the end of that Christian stuff. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. That's the end of it. church sent chosen men sent chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas named the Judas surname Barnabas and inside the chief men mother that was the end of it. no such thing being no Christian that was the end of it. Now, this uh, 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 the second place in the Bible where it's talking about being a Christian. Uh, shouldn't even heard nothing like that. That's how you know that Saul from Tarsus a lie. Is when you heard uh, 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 King Agrippa say he was almost persuaded to be a Christian. You know that's a lie. See, this is this these these are the things that that reveal that Saul from Tarsus, the self-proclaimed apostle Paul, is a lie. He lied. He be lying. And then the third place in the Bible it talks about uh, being a Christian is uh 1 Peter chapter chapter 4, verse 16, and you know that you know how it goes. Uh 
if any man suffer as a Christian. You know that scripture. Because you know the Christians, they throw that scripture out. They be lying on Apostle Paul. I mean, they be lying on Apostle Peter. We just got through going. Go, uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 22. The apostles with an S and the elders with an S and the whole church they sent chosen men back to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas namely uh, uh, Judas uh, who surnamed Barnabas and Silas chief men among the brethren so we know that Apostle Peter how the Apostle Peter going to turn around and tell you to be a Christian. Apostle Peter ain't tell you to be no Christian. The Apostle Peter was telling you that there were people going around lying. See, when you read the whole book of Acts, we know that uh, after Acts chapter 15, you know, uh, and then you go into uh, Acts chapter uh, 22, where Saul from Tarzan lies when he, when he tells about his conversion. And then Acts chapter 26, when Saul from Tarsus sent proclaimed Apostle Paul again, when he recounts his uh, conversion, he lied again. When you get to Acts chapter 27 and 28, see Saul from Tarsus, he by himself, because he was going around with Silas. The uh, church took Silas away from uh, Saul. And so he was going around by himself. So the church wasn't telling him to go nowhere. How he ended up in, in Rome. Nobody from the church in Jerusalem told him to go anywhere. See, he, he doing all this on his own. He going around lying. So when it comes to the people who lying, this is what the apostle Peter was telling you. That people who was listening to, to Saul in Rome when you listen to Saul, you're lying. And that's what the people were doing. They were listening to Saul. And when you listen to Saul, you're lying. So the Apostle Peter told you, if any man suffer as a Christian, he gave you instruction on how to address this issue. People are going around lying. Like they're doing today. Going around lying. Talking about they're a Christian and, and all this. You're lying. There's no such thing being a Christian. That was the end of it. Acts chapter 15, verse 22, and as well as uh, the coming uh, scriptures. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. And uh, Acts chapter, uh, let me excuse me, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 15, 16, 17, 18. The apostle Peter put the spotlight on Saul from Tarsus, self proclaimed apostle, all that epistle writing he was doing. He exposed him. He was exposed. The apostle Peter exposed Saul from Tarsus because he was lying. Nobody told him to write no epistle. He, you see, he acted on his own accord. Nobody in the church in Jerusalem told him to do anything. He did it on his own. He acted on his own accord. He, He's not going by nothing that the church is going by in Jerusalem. He lied. All those appeal nothing. They all lies. Throw them away. You don't need to read anything that Saul from Tarsus, the separate clan Apostle Paul, uh, wrote. They all lies. We was talking about the, all these man-made religious organizations. You know, we don't, we don't want never want to leave these groups out, like the uh, Moor Science Temple and uh, the Nation of Islam. The uh, what they call them, the Five Percent Nation and uh, the Black Hebrew Israelites and uh, the the Rastafarians. 
Now, all these groups had the same source. You know where they came from. They were listening to the Germans and the Latins. All these African Americans who were living over there during that period of time, the early 1900s. You know, the majority of African Americans was illiterate. Were illiterate, including the people that's on the East Coast. Were illiterate. So the only the only thing you learned was that you listened to were the people who were, who was oppressing you. The Germans and the Latin. That's who you were listening to. And the only thing you were doing was repeating what you heard. Because they didn't ever give you no education. They were denying. The Germans and the Latin were denying all these African Americans who were living here in the, in the United States. They, you were being denied uh, education. You didn't have no rights. You didn't have no civil rights. Have you forgotten all these different, uh, what, what was that, Plessy, uh, United States government versus Plessy and all this, where they made segregation legal in the whole United States. All these different laws they passed for Jim Crow laws. You must have forgot about them. You must have forgot. They must have slipped your mind. When they had this, had these different court cases where they legalized segregation, where they legalized uh, 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 denying African Americans education, you must have forgot all that. And then you're gonna walk around talking about some Moorish science temple, some nation of Islam, talking about some Black Hebrew Israelites. Talking about some fives and then the Rastafarians. You, you see all these Jamaicans living on the East Coast? The same people started all this all this junk. It was the Germans and the Latins. That's who did it. Just like all these religious organizations, it was the Germans and the Latins. All these man made religious organizations. It was the Germans and the Latins. That's who you've been listening to. Nobody in South Saharan Africa, no Rastafari. Use your common sense, man. Use your common sense. When you see some Rastafari, that, I'm talking about some Haddon Selassie. Use your common sense. There's no such thing. There's no Rastafari it's nowhere in South Saharan Africa. So, you know. And talking about the uh, black Hebrew Israelite. Nobody in Sub Saharan Africa know no black Hebrew Israelite. And talking about some five percent. I mean, when you see these religious organizations, you then you see the people living in Sub Saharan Africa. Nobody is no more science temple. Nobody in Sub Saharan Africa is no more science temple. Nobody when we talk about the uh, East African, West African slave trade, nobody was a more science temple came over here to be no more science, no, no more science temple came over here. Nobody, no nation of Islam came over here. If there's no nation of Islam, no way in Sub Saharan Africa. Nobody listening to no Louis Farrakhan in Sub Saharan Africa. Nobody. It was the Germans and the Latins who, who, uh, who initiated all these different groups. It was the Germans and the Latins. That's who you've been listening to. They are the ones who started the Moorish Science Temple and the Nation of Islam, the 5% name. They, they the ones who behind all this. The black Hebrew Israelites. It was the Germans and the Latins. The Rastafarians, the Germans, and the Latins, that's who did it. So stop walking around thinking you're going to go around join all this junk and thinking that you're listening to the truth. It's not nothing true from me. How about none of that mess? It's all lies. It was the Germans and the Latins. That's where it came from.
Now, we're going to continue to uh, talk about African traditional religion. Now, African traditional religion is being taught at institutions of higher learning, colleges, and universities in sub Saharan Africa. You can earn a bachelor's degree, bachelor's degree, PhD, studying African traditional religion. Now, one of the books we're going to continue to read from and refer to is titled West African Traditional Religion, written by Dr. Joseph Obasani Bolelu and Dr. P. Adelumo de Pebu. Another book we're going to continue to read from referred to the title African Traditional Religion and Definition written by Dr. E. Beloja Adobo. Another book we're going to continue to read from referred to the title African Religions and Philosophy written by Dr. John S. M. B. Another book we're going to continue to read from referred to the title Concepts of God Africa, read by Dr. John S. M. B. deal with all this uh, you know, talking about the Germans and the Latins, you know, we had to deal with this gang point of view that's where it came from using all these different words talking about the word, uh, talking about you in a gang that's a German word and that's not even what the word means but all these African Americans and including now all these Hispanic Latinos you know you, you, you know, you really didn't have no education, you really illiterate, so you ain't know what the word gang mean. People say all kind of words around you. You don't know what the words mean. It's just like talking about some colors, talking about some red and blue. These individuals are illiterate. You don't even know how you got to Los Angeles, California. You don't even know, you know when they're talking about the East African, West African slave trade, you don't know what you're talking about. To be honest with you, to be honest, you be saying stuff, talking about the slave trade, and, and, and be, when you got over, you've been denied education. You going by what you heard and what you hear. That's that's the honest truth. People that live, um, I'm living here in America. Myself, African American. The majority of the information that you that you uh receive. The Germans and the Latins. So, basically, what you've been doing, including myself, what we've been doing, you going by what the Germans and Latins tell you. Up until recently, now recently, you starting to see the uh, the uh, Niger Congo, the Africans from Sub Saharan Africa, starting to come over here. They starting to come over. Now, a lot of these issues are starting to become, uh, starting to come, you know, uh, being addressed. And it's not what the Germans and the Latins say. Now, you're starting to hear what the people in Sub Saharan Africa have to say. But for a long time, the only information you received was from the Germans and the Latins. So when it comes to all these different words you've been saying, talking about you a gang member, talking about you in the mob and all this, the only thing you're doing is going about what the Germans and the Latin would, had taught you. Talking about you a thug. You ain't had no education. The majority of African Americans were illiterate. You only repeating what the Germans and Latin said around you. You heard them talking to each other. They, they intentionally say these words around you and then the only thing you do is just repeat what you heard. Yeah, boss. 
Yes sir boss. No sir boss. It's the only thing you're doing, just repeating what the Germans and Latin said. You ain't even know what it means. You ain't know the origin of the word or nothing. That's a Dutch word, and Dutch is, Dutch is German. All that talking about you're a goon. Everything you say is negative. Every time you open your mouth, you always try to be a criminal. Talking about you're a goon. In English, that's German. That's the reason why all these prisons full of African Americans today. Because the only thing you was taught was to be a criminal. Taught to be a goon and talking about you 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 in the gang and talking about you 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 a thug and uh talking about you uh going around talking about boss and you a pimp and you a whore and you a hustler and, and I'm out here grinding and selling drugs and making all these negative uh hip hop videos talking about the trap house now. Everything you say out your mouth, you just being a criminal. You don't never say anything positive. Everything you do is, is always about committing crimes, being a criminal. That's the influence the Germans and the Latins have on you. See, this is this will really why I continue to reiterate with a lot of people who are outside this country because of anti-gang didn't just start recently. It didn't just start last year or the year before that. See, that's the reason why I kept tending to continue, continue to uh, talk to people about what the U.S. government did years ago and continue to do today because there are people outside this country that the United States government continues to consult with because they know that these people came from, from, uh, came from Europe, came from Asia, some people came from Africa, criminals, and had to deal with these individuals. So you had to consult with the people in, in, in Europe, you had to consult with the people in Asia, you had to consult with the people in, in Africa about some of these criminals. And that's what the United States government did. They see, that's the reason why anti gang didn't just start recently. For example, when they was having to having to deal with all these uh what they call them the mafia and the uh different different uh um, criminal organizations and syndicates. See the majority when they had this big immigration uh uh the early nineteen hundred was so many people were coming from Europe and coming from Asia and many of them were criminals. Many many of the people were criminals. The mafia, the Italian mafia, the the Spanish uh, criminals came over. Many of the people in, in England and uh, uh, France. Many of the other people that came over were criminals, and the United States government had to deal with them when they came over. They are uh, uh, majority of them came on the East Coast, and they started committing crime. Instead of, you know, the crime they, they used to commit in Europe and Asia. Just like uh, when we talk about Asia, East Asia, for example, the Chinese, uh, what they call them, the triads, for example. Now, you think you're going to deal with the Chinese triads? No, you're not going to, me and nobody else going to be able to deal with no Chinese triads. The United States government going to have to consult with the Chinese government on how to deal with with these Chinese triads. Cause first of all, we don't even know who these people are, but they end up in the United States and they start committing crimes here in the United States of America. So what, what we're gonna have to do, the United States government gonna have to consult with the Chinese government on how to deal with the Chinese triads. Cause more, a lot of times the United States government don't even know how to deal with, with, with the people that's already living in the United States of America. And then you have people that come from other countries 
they come to America. And then when they, they come to America, they start committing all these crimes. So when it comes to anti-gang, anti-gang didn't just start uh, yesterday, you know, last year, the year before. It started years ago, way back. Just like we were talking about the prohibition. Many of those criminals who came from overseas, just like the Italian mafia, the, the Irish uh, gangs and things just make sure. The Jewish, some of the Jewish people being accused of being involved in criminal activity. The United States government had to consult with the European governments, had to consult with the Asian governments, had to consult with governments in Africa about these, these criminals and how to deal with these criminals. Because that's where they came from. So that's the anti gang. Just like I tell a lot of a lot of people, oh, you know, continue. To, uh, when I was growing up, I wasn't no gang member. See, people don't know you until you until you, you know you bring this to their attention. Because sometimes people assume about people living in America. People, you know, people you know outside the country. When they think about people in America, they automatically you know sometimes you know they you know. Not intentional, but mistakenly. Sometimes people just had this perception that this 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 concept, this gang point of view, that is everybody, is everybody. And the reason why, because a lot of it is because of people like you know these sororities and these fraternities. They done left the country. They done went outside the country. They influenced. What they intentionally do, they try to influence everybody in this country to support the criminal street gangs, the sorority and the fraternities, and, and, and also those secret societies. They try, to, they try to force all this on you and on me. But when I was growing up, you know, like I tell people, like this house I live in, when I've been making my video, this house is paid for. My daddy and my mom, they paid, this house is paid for. We got the deeds to the house. Now my dad, he no, he's no longer living, he passed away 2000. When I was growing up, see, I wasn't no gang member. And when I say that, people probably look at you and me, what you mean? When you was growing up, that's what I'm telling you. See, when I was growing up, I knew that there was some something not right about other people and that's what it was see they they was involved in something that wasn't supposed to be involved in anyway they didn't know what they were talking about going around talking about you in a gang see you ain't know what you was talking about because that's not what the word gang mean in the first place you can't join no gang gang don't have nothing to do no red no blue no green don't have nothing to do no colors don't have nothing to do with no symbols. The word gang, like I've been showing you, it means an act or a way of going. So we don't, you know, we don't we don't understand why people in Chicago, Illinois making videos, people in Los Angeles, California making gang videos because you're stupid, you illiterate. The word gang don't have nothing to do with no colors. So like I said, when I was growing up, I was not no gang member. I went to West Haven Elementary School, went to Lanier Junior High School, graduated from Fairland High School, right here in this right here in this same neighborhood, right here in this area. West Haven Elementary School right up the street. Lanier Junior High School is right just right up the street, right behind me. Fairland High School is right up the street from West Haven Elementary. It's on the same street. Just walk in that direction. The same neighborhood. See, when I like I said, when I was growing up, I wasn't no gang mom. It was it was children who were in, who were in grades, you know, uh when I was in kindergarten, it was children in the sixth grade. 
who were gang members. That's what it meant. When I was in junior high school, when I, by the time I got to junior high school, this whole concept about being a gang, that's when hip hop music, let me see, when I was in high, uh, junior high school, uh, the early 80s, the early 80s, I was in junior high school. By the time I got to high school, the influence of those music videos, uh, all that junk, talking about coming from California, and they were saying all that junk on me. On see, by that time, the uh, mid to late 80s, that gang and nonsense, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, it wasn't something that was suppressed, but it was visible. That's what I'm, see, that's what I'm trying to, that's what I want people to think about. By the time you got to high school, in the mid 80s, in the late 80s, it was, it, it wasn't a suppressed, you understand? It wasn't suppressed. It was, it was, it was widespread, you know, it, it had spread. And it was visible. It was visible by then. It was visible. So when I say I wasn't no game, I'm, that's really what I'm telling. It wasn't something that was suppressed by then because by the time I got to high school, you know, you could see people walking around talking about they in a game. But I wasn't no game. I'm. I wasn't trying to support none of that. And I'm still doing the same thing today. Because it's wrong. And then, you know, now, you know, not only is it wrong, but it really shows your ignorance. You're really ignorant. Because like I say, when you know what the word gang mean, you know, I you know, I really don't understand what, what your problem is. You know, you act like you don't, you know, you you know, people wanna intentionally do wrong and you wanna intentionally, you know. Not read the dictionary well, you know. You know, you, you know, you want to uh, bring bring stuff upon yourself. You know, uh, that's wrong to lie like that. You know, the sorority and the fraternity, you know, they 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 the base of the criminal street gang, and then for the uh, sorority and fraternity, they depend on. The secret society, but to be saying you're a gang member, to say you you know you 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 a goon and talking about boss and you're a thug, it's a lie. You really showing your ignorance, and to be honest with you, that's how it all got started. Because all these African Americans, you are illiterate. That's the honest truth. That's the honest truth. You, you were illiterate. You only repeating what the Germans and the Latins told you. They, they'll say all this junk around you. And then you'll just repeat it. You just repeating what the Germans and the Latins said. They never told you what it meant. They didn't teach you what it meant. It's just like the sorority of attorney. They'll sit around talking about so rope and freighter. They didn't teach you what it mean. You've been you've been living over here in America, all these African Americans, and now all these Hispanic Latinos, you you claim you speak English. You've been saying brother and sister all your life. Then you wait till you get to college and talk about you gonna go join the Soro, the sorority. You gonna go join the fraternity. You saying the same thing over and over again. That's how stupid you really are. You really stupid. You've been saying sister and brother all your life. Then you're gonna sit up and talk about you gonna go to college and join the sorority and fraternity. You are stupid. You stupid. That's the bottom line, you stupid. You know, you don't make no sense whatsoever. No sense whatsoever. And so, uh, when it comes to anti-gang, like I say, uh, you know, there are a lot of young people, they be enthusiastic about, you know, supporting anti-gang. You know, it's not just people here in America, it's people outside this country. And, uh, and a lot of young people be enthusiastic and 
and just and rightly so. But what but what uh, we don't want to do is to mislead the children to thinking that it just started, you know, yesterday, a year ago, or two years ago. Anti gang is you know the base of it is anti crime because the people are criminals. You're being specific when you are, you know, it's just like when you, when you deal with the police department, you have a homicide unit, you have a sex crimes unit, you know, you have a anti, you know, you have a, uh, what they call it, uh, 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 what they call it, that unit, the gang unit, uh, that's, that, that's basically what we talking about. You know, the police department have different units to deal with different type of crime to fill them. The FBI do the same thing. They have different, you know, sections of the FBI to deal. You know, you got terrorism. You got federal agents that deal with terrorism. You got agents that deal with sex trafficking. You got federal agents that deal with kidnappings. Everybody don't deal with the same thing. But the FBI, they deal with all that. But they don't assign everybody. To the so when we say anti-gang. It's really anti-crime, but you're being more specific when you say anti-gang. So, you know, because the young people don't want to be confused. It's, it's, it's anti-crime because because gangs is they criminals. Ain't no such thing as no 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 being no gang, and you know you uh it, oh, it ain't no you're a criminal. First of all, it's a lie. When you speak German, the people in Germany, they say gang every day. Because they speak German. Think about that. The people in Germany, they, they say gang every day. Because they speak German. We know that mob is an abbreviation. It's not even a word. It's an abbreviation on mobile. Now, the people that, the Latin people who speak Latin, they say mobile every day because it's Latin. It's Latin. It don't have nothing to do with no colors. It don't have nothing to do with no getting in no fights. It don't have nothing to do with being against nobody. It don't have nothing to do with no crime, period. The criminals, you know. So, when it comes to, uh, like I say, anti-gang, it didn't start six months ago. It didn't start a year ago. It started years ago, even before people started coming to America, you know, because many of the criminals came from Europe, came from Asia, came from Africa. That's where they came from. Then they came to America. You know, like that, like that old saying, uh, the people that live here in the United States of America, everybody came from somewhere else, including the Native Americans. Everybody. Everybody came from somewhere else. The archaeologists, they still digging. They, they really ain't found nobody that was originally from this part of the world, North America, Central America, South America. Everybody came from somewhere else. So, now we're going to continue to, uh, continue, uh, talk about the criminals and, and, and continue to work toward the day when we can continue to speak out and complain. But it's going to be a uh, anti-gang demonstration, anti-gang protest, because the, sor and the sorority and fraternity, they not left out, because that's what that is. Them the criminals, the secret society, they ain't left out, because that's who uh, started the uh, sororities and the fraternity. That's the base of the sorority fraternity is the secret society. So uh, we're gonna 
you know, continue to work toward that. And um, <clears throat> and you know, and, 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 and which which is the right thing to do because this stuff been going on too long. You know, when we talking about the uh, East African West African slave trade. And uh, the majority of, uh, of the uh, Africans who, who who came over from Sub Saharan Africa, the majority of Niger Congo, you, you can count on your hand if a Nile of Saharan made it over here and then get thrown over the boat, you know, died on the way and did make it over. You can count them on your hand. And the same thing for the Afro Asiatic. You can count them on your hand. The majority, the overwhelming majority, Niger Congo. And uh, they came to the East Coast. But then there were other slave ports. The state of, uh, the state of Mississippi was a slave port. The uh, state of Louisiana, the city of New Orleans, slave port. The state of Texas. The city of Galveston, slave port. And uh, Veracruz, Mexico, slave port. People came over from Africa to be, you know, now what we've been taught to be slave. The only information that you had for many, many years, it came from the Germans and the Latins. Recently, the people from Sub-Saharan Africa starting to come over. So information that we had, you know, telling telling all of us that we were sent over to be slaves. Well, like I say, the people who, who said that the Germans and the Latins, recently the people from Sub-Saharan Africa are now starting to come over. So, you can't just listen to what the Germans and the Latins say. You can't listen to what the Germans and the Latins taught you. And, uh, you know, uh, and then we be talking about the, uh, celebrity athletes, celebrity entertainers, who leave this country and go outside this country. See, that's the reason why it's going to be anti-gang uh, demonstration and protest. Because see, the uh, sororities and the fraternities, they leave this country. Then you have all these businesses outside this country. And see, then you, you go outside this country saying stuff out your mouth. Trying to promote this, 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 this gang stuff to uh, you know other parts of the world. You see, that's what's going to uh, inspire many people around the world. It's the wrong that the Germans and Latins do, and then the wrong that African Americans do. It's the wrong that Hispanic Latino Lat Latinos do. You leave this country, you leave America, just like the U.S. military, and then you go around other people, you know, trying to promote this street criminal, street gang way of life. See, that that's going to be the inspiration for many people around the world to protest. Cause it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. Now, some words of uh, coercion, coerce, sexual coercion, psychological coercion. Psychological manipulation, psychological abuse.
But see, that's that's another reason why I continue to uh, make people aware. Is when you see people leave this country, all that sorority, fraternity, uh, 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 including you know the uh, uh, secret society. You know, people leave this country. And people fly. You no, know, people go on uh, cruise ships and the U.S. military businesses. See, people do things, and uh, you know, you try to have influence, and the influence you try to have is a negative influence. And uh, so, I continue to try to make people aware. You know, I, I got my DNA done, and uh. My DNA came back 69% African, and 61% uh, of that is uh, West African, 6% uh, uh, East Central Africa, 2% South Central Africa, and 29% uh, of my DNA European, 18% from the British Isles, 7% from East Europe, 4% from Iberian Peninsula. And then uh, uh, two percent from North and Central America. And uh, now we know, you know, uh, when they talk about North and Central America, the Native Americans, and uh, what they really talking about is uh, the people that uh, left Siberia and uh, crossed over from the. Uh, you know, they crossed over uh, from Siberia to Alaska and, and, and went from Alaska to Canada and, you know, uh, to North America. And then went down to C Central America. The uh, Clovis, the Clovis uh, uh, hunters, and, and uh, that's what they were talking about, the first Americans. And, uh, and also 1% Northeast Asia. Now, when we talk about Northeast Asia, you know, when I looked at the uh, map, I had to zoom in, and uh, it was in uh, the Xinjiang Uga Autonomous Region. Now, uh, now North Xinjiang is a uh, Zangaria, you no, know, the Tibetan uh, Buddhist, that's in North Xinjiang. Now, South Xinjiang, that's where, you know, when I located on the map, it's in South Xinjiang, the Tarim Basin. Now, uh, the overwhelming majority of the Turkic Uber people. Now, they're also in Xinjiang, the Han Chinese. But when uh, the Xinjiang, Uber autonomous region, the majority of the people, the population, the overwhelming majority of the people are Uber. I think it's uh, 48, 40, 45, 40 some percent. The majority are Uber, Turkey Uber people. And then you have the, uh, uh, the Han Chinese. Now, when you know the history, when you study the history of uh, Xinjiang, uh, the Indo-Europeans were also in that area. The Tocharians and also the Indo-Iranians, the Sake. Now, the Indo-European Tocharians, they intermix with the Turkic Uga people. They mutually agreed. They mutually agreed to intermix with one another. And so, uh, that's why, you know, they found my DNA.
But you know, we we know we're gonna continue to do it, and I do that intentionally for for the same reason. People leave the United States of America, and uh, they they be gone. They they leave this country, and they be talking about all this gang and all this mess. So I continue to try to you know maintain a positive uh, influence and, and, and continue to show people that first of all, I'm not no gang member. And I have not been no gang member. And whoever these people are that is walking around in the U.S. military and businesses and, uh, you know, things in nature and just tourists, vacation people, tourists, uh, it's, it's a bunch of, that's me, I, 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 I show people the dictionary. I show people the dictionary. And like I say, that's going to be the inspiration for many people in Europe Many people in Asia, many people, many people in in Sub-Saharan Africa, but no Africa, the African continent, in Mexico, Central America, South America, is because people are doing things that's wrong. A lot of Hispanic Latinos involved in gang activity. And when you show the dictionary, people they're not gonna understand why you're doing it. People in Sub-Saharan Africa, they see all these African Americans over here. And then you're in the U.S. military and government. I'm talking about the sororities and fraternities. You know, people are not going to support that nonsense. When they, when they see the dictionary, they're talking about you a gang member. And then the people in Europe, in Asia, nobody's going to understand the, 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 the uh, reason for you to be going out talking about you a thug. Nobody, nobody's gonna support that. Nobody's gonna, gonna uh, condone your ignorance. Nobody's gonna condone your ignorance. Like I say, the people in Germany, they speak German every day. They say gang, that's, that's part of the language, the German language. You know, so I mean, the people, in, in, the Latin people, they know that mob is an abbreviation. But they you know they hear people say, they a mobster. Then you a gangster. You showing your ignorance. That's an Americanism. That's an Americanism. They made it up. Gang plus stir. Mob plus stir. They made it up. You don't know what a symbol break is. You illiterate. What you doing walking around talking about some red and blue? Some green. Yellow, white, black. You ignorant. What you doing going around with symbols? I'm talking about a five point star and a six point star. You you really showing your ignorance. That's what it means. And that's gonna be the inspiration for anti-gang demonstration, anti-gang protests worldwide. It really is. So uh, we're gonna get ready to go to the dictionary, but you know we're gonna continue to have these, these, these talks and these conversations. It's not like somebody just being on a video and just keep saying. Sometimes that's what you need to do. Sometimes you, that's what you need. Somebody to keep telling you the same thing over and over and over again because you keep doing the same wrong over and over again. So when you keep doing the same wrong over and over. Again, Somebody need to keep telling you the, the right thing over and over and over, over again.
we don't get ready to go to the dictionary. Prefixes and suffixes, as well as uh, root words, they in uh, Webster's Third New International Dictionary, as well as uh, Oxford English Dictionary, they in there. So, uh,
Webster's third New International Dictionary, the definition, the meaning of the word gang, the act, manner, or means of going. stupid sorority, the stupid fraternity. Now, this is sister.
Oxford English Dictionary. The definition meaning a game, action, or mode of going, way, passage, and also a set of things or persons. Stupid sorority, the stupid fraternity.
when people see the dictionary, then you you get the you, you get the point. You see how ignorant these African Americans, Hispanic, Latinos, the German, the Latin people walk around talking about they in the game. You 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 just ignorant. We just we just read the dictionary. Then you go around trying to uh you know uh coerce other people trying to be a bully and don't even know what you're talking about. You see that's the reason why like I said people leave the United States because of being being tourists, you know, US military, business, government. You know, things this they can just leave and you know the country. And don't even know what you're talking about. See, that's gonna be the inspiration for anti-gang for demonstration and protest. You know, it's, it's, it, 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 it's no excuse for this type of nonsense and ignorance. It's no excuse. No excuse. I'm out here on, the, you know, I live here in the, in the city of Memphis. And, uh, you know, I had to deal with it every day. Even on my job and things this day. websites for anti-gang logos. video. Again, my name is Eric D. Johnson. I was a long time trying to live right here in the city of Memphis. It's in the county ship in the state of Tennessee. And thank all my family and my support for your continued encouragement and support. And uh, I always put God first. And you take care of yourself. I wish each and every one of you the very best.